Hello, good morning. You're watching the Business News, brought to you by Blytheway, and I'm Charlie Gibson. Now, sometimes, as I always say, the clue is in the name of a company. Sometimes the clue is also in its performance, and in this case, the... Uh the performance is on the Australian stock market, up from a 20 cent listing in 2018 to over a dollar currently. The name of the company is, Adriat it is Adriatic Metals, and the chief executive, Paul Cronin, is with me now in the studio. Paul, very good morning. Morning, thank Charlie. You. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, pleasure. Tell us a little bit more about Adriatic Metals. So, look, Adriatic started in uh, in. Uh, March 2017, new company, um, British PLC, uh, set up specifically to buy a mining concession in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Uh, the concession involved two fields. One was an old operating open pit that had been constructed by the Yugoslavs uh, back in the early 1980s and had shut down in the late 1980s. And the other was a brownfield exploration project called Rupitsa, uh, which is about 12 kilometres away from the, from the existing pit. Uh, where they'd done a, a reasonable amount of exploration and we were keen to get back in and have a look at it. Um, most of the information we had was in paper format. Um, old reports that we'd found, drill hole logs that were in archives in Sarajevo, Belgrade, Ljubljana. Uh, we put together that data um, and started to take a look at what the project could be. And of course we we, uh, we did that, we completed the acquisition in March 2017 and by the beginning of May 2017 we were doing confirmation drilling on the project. So just, just talk me through the logic behind having it as a London PLC and it's Australian listed. Sure. Uh, London PLC for the simple reason uh, that the asset is in Europe. Um, uh, we think that assets of this nature should be well received on London but as you know, as we, we know Expiration assets and early stage assets tend to get a better hearing on the TSX or the ASX than they do on the, on the AIM or the main board here. What we wanted to do was take it to the ASX, take it through that early expiration phase and confirming what we thought we had down there, let the Australian investors sort of absorb that um, and, and drive the valuation. And when it got to the right level, then bring it back to London where I think it naturally sits. So uh, a cynical London investor, because you are now coming to the London market, that's right, isn't that's it? That's right. Yeah. A cynical London investor might say, well, look, the Australians have taken all the upside. They've taken it from 20 cents to a dollar and a bit, mm. and now you're, now you're coming to sell it to us. Yes, no, well, I can see how one might, uh, might view that, but the reality is London investors would have been unlikely to invest in Adriatic in those early days anyway. We they would have said, no, it was going to go up from 20 cents to a dollar. <laughs> possibly, possibly. And as much as I said I thought it might, no one really listened to me. Um, the, reality, the reality is that there's still a long way to go. Uh, you know, the Rupitsa project is quite extraordinary. Uh, it's, you know, good-sized tonnage, very, very high grade. The expiration upside in this region of Europe is extraordinary. You look at Serbia as an example, where you see the likes of Zinjin, uh, Rio Tinto and others who are doing a lot of exploration work in that country. They're all on the Tethian mineral belt. Where we are in, in Bosnia has been relatively unexplored. Um, and the reality is it's because of the constitution of Bosnia and the way the mining code has been constructed between the three levels of government that have actually created these barriers to entry. So if you want to go and do exploration in Bosnia and Herzegovina, you can get an exploration license relatively easily, but to get a mining concession, which you must have first, the canton will require you to pay up to 500,000 euros per square kilometre. Now that, when you're doing coal exploration, might work. When you're doing base and precious metals, you, you, don't, you, can't, you don't stand a chance. And as a result, there's been no juniors in Bosnia. So we have this first mover advantage. We have extensive data. And our exploration effort, whilst it's been ongoing since, you know, effectively uh, May 2017, will continue right through the course of 2020 and 2021. And we're recently funded to, to do that. So have you gone through all of this, this uh, permitting, if you like, pain? The, 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 you talked about those three levels of government and how difficult it was to get there. Have you gone through that or were you grandfathered into that effectively because this is an old mining concession dating from Yugoslav days? A bit of both. Um, yes, we were grandfathered into the original concessions, which were very small, but the fees were paid. 
We then extended those concessions last year. So we, we recognised that there was mineralisation outside of our existing concession boundaries and we went through a process with government of changing those concessions. We have paid those large upfront fees. Um, however, the difference is that we have so much data and a lot of that data we found when we bought some freehold land on the old open pit processing plant site. There was a, a Soviet style administration block um, that had no windows, it was derelict. We went in there and we found 1,500, 2,000 typed reports that detailed all of the exploration that's been conducted in this part of, of Yugoslavia uh, since the 1960s. Typed in Russian through, or typed in? It's typed in, in, in some in Russian and oh. some in, in, in Serb Croat. Uh, so you had a good translator. We did, <laughs> indeed. It's, it's taken us over 18 months to go through it all. Um, so we've looked through those reports, said, right, that looks interesting, let's get that properly translated. Uh, and then we've sat there and digitised and collated that information so that we now have six or seven prospects that we want to drill next year. Just tell us about the resource, what it is, uh, what's the primary metal, what sort of grades are we looking at? Yeah, so at Rupertsu, uh, we've got about 9.4 million tonnes, uh, grading on a gold equivalent basis of about 11 grams per tonne. Uh, and at, uh, at Via Vacha in the open pit, uh, it's 7.4 million tonnes uh, grading at uh, about gold equivalent terms. It's about uh, 1.8 million, uh, 1.8 grams per tonne. So a lot lower grade. Rupitsa is, you know, is, is the key deposit for us. It contains um, probably the highest grade silver, um, then zinc, uh, gold, lead, copper, um, barite uh, and antimony. Scoping study published this morning. Tell us what that showed. Yeah, the culmination of a lot of work. Um, we've done a lot of met work, we've done a lot on the resource, but what it shows is the project is extremely valuable. Um, upfront capex is about 180 million US dollars with a, with a pretty chunky contingency in there. Uh, it shows that the internal rate of return on a post-tax basis is nearly 110%. Uh, it also shows that the project valuation, the net present value at an 8% discount rate, sits just over 900 million US dollars. You're coming to London uh, next month. Are you raising money at this stage? Not at all. Uh, in fact, we actually have just completed a capital raising, uh, raising 25 million Aussie dollars uh, on the ASX, uh, but through London, US, Australian and Asian investors uh, a couple of weeks ago. That funding will give us what we need to take the project through to that bankable feasibility study. It'll allow us to continue a very aggressive exploration program over the course of 2020 on a number of new targets that we've really only recently identified. Um, some of those are on our existing concession and some of them are not. And what you're going to see next year is we're going to be making some applications for new concessions in this Varish region of, of Bosnia. Um, and really cementing our first mover advantage in that uh, very, very prolific mineral district. Paul, thank you very much indeed for joining us. We, we wish you the very best of luck. Thanks, Charlie. It was a pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Paul Cronin there, the Chief Executive and Managing Director for Adriatic Metals, an early Christmas present perhaps for London investors. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for, but join me, Charlie Gibson, uh, very soon on the Business News brought to you by Blytheway, where we will be hoping to bring you more such opportunities. But until then, you have a very capital day.